What's going on guys, this is Sam, and today I wanna to show you how to send and receive iMessages safely and securely on your Android device. This is a video that I honestly thought I would never be making, but here we are. Let's go ahead and jump in and I'll show you how to do it. Now, unfortunately, this is not an official app from Apple just yet. I remember we heard a while back that they were working on an iMessage app for Android. This isn't official, but it's basically as close as we can get right now. So to get started, head over to wemessageapp.com. I'll leave a link for this down below in the description and go ahead and click on download. Download the app on Google Play for your Android device, whether it's a Pixel, Samsung Galaxy, or anything else. But you also have to download a macOS companion app. If you you don't have a Mac computer, unfortunately WeMessage will not work for you. It relies on a server running on your Mac to transmit the messages from your Mac computer to your Android device. So if you have a Windows PC, unfortunately you still cannot get iMessage on Android, but if you have a Mac, go ahead and continue watching because it works and it's incredible. The setup process for WeMessage on your Mac is a little bit time consuming and a little bit technical, but the first step is to go ahead and download the companion app, the WeServer file for your Mac. Double click on the folder that it downloads after it unzips the file and click on the run.command file. That's gonna shoot you over to terminal. That's where everything with WeServer happens is in the terminal application on your Mac. And when you go through the process, it'll eventually ask you to install a Java JDK. So hit on more info or just go over to Java's official website. Once again, I will have these links down below in the description and click on this option right here. It's the JDK for Mac OS. It's gonna take a second to install. You have to enter your password at one point. Once again, not the most user-friendly process. I wish this could be bundled with the Wii Server Companion somehow, but I'm sure there's some licensing and copyright issues that go into that. Once the JDK has been successfully installed, head back to your downloads folder and double click on that run.command file that we initially clicked on one more time. This time it's gonna say you have to set up accessibility settings. That's just going to allow this to work properly. It should automatically launch up the System Preferences app for you, but if not, you can just head over to System Preferences, Security and Privacy, privacy tab and then on accessibility and you have to go ahead and click the plus sign for terminal if the terminal app isn't there or if the terminal app is already showing up like it was on my computer just hit the check mark next to it and you should be done with this step all right so now that our accessibility settings are properly configured for the terminal app go ahead and click on that run.command file one more time and this is the end of the setup process for our computer you have to enter your exact iMessage email to get this to work. So I'm gonna enter mine right here, that is my personal email, so I had to blur it out. But you're gonna enter your exact Apple ID iMessage email that you want the Wii Message app to work with. However, for the password, you don't have to use your actual Apple ID password. That's simply to authenticate you connecting it to your Wii Message server. So I would actually not recommend using your exact Apple ID password just in case something would end up getting breached. I just entered a random password here that I knew I would remember. And then once you've done that and confirmed the password, your Wii server is set up and ready to go. It is a pretty lengthy process, but I promise you we are almost there. Before going over to our Android device, because we have two thirds of the details that we need, our username, which is our email and our password, we have to find our computer's private IP address. And to do this and to be certain that you're finding the right one, head over to system preferences, click on network, click the advanced button, and on the tab that says TCP slash IP, which is the default tab that it normally opens up to, next to IPv4 address, it will show your private IP address that you're connecting to to get the whole server to work. So pull that up and now head over to your Android device, launch the Wii Message app, enter that exact IP address that you're looking at on your Mac right now into the box on your Android that says IP address, then enter your actual iMessage email and whatever password you set up during the setup process, for me that's the one that I came up with on the spot, and once you've done that, for one of the first times ever, I am sending and receiving iMessages on an Android device. It's crazy stuff. I'm so excited that we finally have the ability to do this. Yes, it's a convoluted process. Yes, it's probably not for everyone, but if you are a diehard Android fan that wants to send and receive iMessages, you can run this server on your computer that transmits the data to your device and talk to all your friends and family that speak exclusively in blue messages. If you enjoyed watching this video or you learned something new, it does help me out if you take just one second to drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe for more tutorials between Android and iOS in the future. If you wanna help support the channel amid YouTube demonetization, you can help me out and buy a shirt over from iOS dataos.com slash merch. I would genuinely appreciate that as well. I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great and I will talk to you in my next video.